Hey y'all, today on the farm is a very windy Monday. I got the planters hooked up. We're getting ready to put some corn seed in the ground. Gonna do things a little bit different this year. Do, do a pretty exciting new uh, seed trial. But first, I gotta get these planters serviced up and ready to go. I've greased all the bearings on the planter and I've oiled all the chains. So now I'm gonna put my corn plates in the actual planter boxes. y'all listen next morning i worked on bearings and disc and all kind of stuff till late last night but now we gotta start putting corn seed in the ground we got a rain coming after lunch today and we gotta get as much ground covered as possible so i'm gonna start out by loading this planter with some of decab's finest newest variety and then we're gonna do something a little bit different You will notice that this corn seed is green. That is because it has a seed treatment on it. It is normal yellow corn, but they put a seed treatment on it to help it out when it's first getting started, to warn off any pests that may attack it very on its young life. And so that is why this particular seed is green at this point. Now that I have my seed hoppers loaded, I'm gonna add a dry lubricant. This is talc powder. A dry lubricant may sound like an oxymoron to you, but it is true. You can use uh, talc powder or graphite. And what it does, it helps this seed slide through the planter and fall out like it's supposed to be. If you don't put the dry lubricant on it, sometimes this uh, coating can get a little oily and the seeds won't, won't slide like they're supposed to. The oily buildup will, will occur in the bottom of the box. So if you keep it dry and have this talc in it, it will all slide right through just like it's supposed to do. If I could give a little bit of advice to other farmers, people running uh, complicated planter setups, if this is not a simple little planter like you run in your garden, plant an acre or two, there's a thousand moving parts on, on these planters. And so if I could give you some advice, um, only fill the seed hoppers about half full, a quarter, a third, maybe half full at the most. Go out to the field, make a couple rounds, get all the kinks worked out, get everything working good, and then fill them all the way up. I have currently today had to stop and take off four fully loaded hoppers and, and, and make some adjustments. Uh, these hoppers when fully loaded are about 70 to 75 pounds. You gotta pick that up, you gotta hold it. You gotta make whatever adjustments you can while holding that or get someone to come out to the field and make the adjustments for you while you hold the big weight because you can't set it down. They don't have a flat bottom on it. You can't flip it over. It'll lid will come off. You'll spill corn everywhere. So I advise people until they get the planter dialed in and, and everything working like it did last year when you put it up, don't fill the seed hoppers up all the way until you got everything running smooth. The main way I control my seed rate per acre is with those transmissions on the planter that, that we set that the, uh, they're gear dry, they're chain driven. And so we have different gears, different cogs we can use to get a, the right ratio we need of seed rate. But to fine tune it to get just right, 
I have the, this, this planter's on a vacuum system, and I have control of the vacuum right here. I can adjust my vacuum pressure higher or lower, and that will put out more or less seed. And also, I can roll my ground speed up with this IVT, uh, infinitely variable transmission. I can roll my ground speed up one tenth of a mile an hour at a time, and as I get another tenth or another two tenths of a mile an hour, it will lower my seed rate just a little bit. And as I slow down, it will get a little more precise, a little more even, it will be a, a higher seed rate. Same thing with the vacuum. If I put more or less vacuum on there, I can raise or lower my seed rate with that. So a lot of really fine tuned adjustments when you run one of these planters. Notice the land prep out here. My ground is nice and smooth, free of clods for the most part. Very, it's a very fine tilt and it has a light set of grooves laid across it. And that was by a new machine we we're trying out on the farm. I got a whole special video coming up on this new machine we use to get this land ready. Pretty neat, pretty exciting, something very, very new and unusual that I would venture to say none of you have ever seen before. There may be somebody somewhere that's seen it before, but got a pretty cool video coming out shortly after this one. We got to run that machine on a few more different types of land to get a full grasp of what it's doing and what all it's capable of. And once we've completed running on all different types of soil, we're going to post a great video showcasing the new machine. harvesting is their favorite time of year people love to pick peanuts i know so many people tell me about how picking peanuts is their favorite thing to do i think out in the midwest they love to get on the big combines and and, and, and uh, harvest the grain crops but for me i enjoy planting more than anything i love putting seeds in the ground and i love to plant i grow on average 14 to 15 crops per year that's a lot of different a lot of different crops, a lot of different seeds got to be put in the ground. They all have specific timings where they go in the ground. They all have specific depths and very specific requirements, very specific uh, spacings. All of it's different, and I enjoy that. I really, really enjoy planting seeds. I, I love, love, love this time of year. I feel like I'm getting something done while I'm getting seeds in the ground. Target seed rate up here, 32,000. This is my real time average. Right now it's 32,000, but you'll see there it is 32,100. It kind of bumps up and down in real time. Each one of these bars represents a different row unit behind me. It's giving me the real time average of each row. If you see no bar, that means we're perfect. But if it's up, up above the line, that means we're putting out too much. And if it's below, we're putting out too little. I've planted half the field now, and I've come back up to the shop. I've unloaded the planters, took all the planter boxes off, cleaned them completely out. Uh, they are stone cold, empty and clean. And now we're gonna swap over to hybrid 85 non-GMO corn seed. For those of you who don't know what GMO corn is or GMO cotton or, or any other GMO crop that may be out there, GMO means it has been genetically modified. And what that, uh, the longer the shorter that, what that really means is they modify the genes of it so that when we spray uh, glyphosate, uh, aka Roundup on it, it doesn't kill it. So you can modify it so we can able to spray a, a herbicide across the field that will kill the weeds but not kill that particular crop. Kill anything but that crop, uh, hopefully, but not in all cases. There are some things that have resistance to Roundup or glyphosate. The other 
genetic modification they make is not what you think. A lot of people think it's made uh, genetically altered for yield. It's not. It's genetically altered to be resistant to worms. I was going to say bugs. But really, it's worms. The moths will come lay an egg on the cotton bowl or on the corn ear. And when that egg hatches, a tiny little worm, about an eighth of an inch long, comes out and goes inside. If it bites that cotton bowl or if it bites that ear of corn, there is something in the genes of it what will kill that worm so the worm won't go out there and destroy cotton fields or destroy corn fields the worm will actually die when it takes its first bite of the corn or of the cotton so gmo means you can spray roundup on the crop and if a worm bites it it will die this seed i'm planting here uh, by hybrid 85 is non-gmo it has not been genetically modified it is a hybrid which means it's a cross of two different parents, but it is not genetically modified. So if I spray Roundup on this corn, it will die. And if a worm bites this corn, it will not die. So that is the main difference, or differences, between GMO and non-GMO. These planters are ground-driven, and what that means is there's a wheel with a set of chains on it, cogs, that go up there and attach to a shaft that goes across and is linked to the row units. So when that wheel spins, it makes the row units drop seed. If the wheel is not touching the ground and I'm traveling, then no seed is dropping. You have to have this wheel in firm contact with the ground in order for the planter to drop the seed. There are four, yep, four ground drive wheels on this particular planter, and there are three transmissions. I'm gonna mount y'all right above the transmission here so you can see how this works. then comes back here turns all these cogs but then turns the top shaft but then turns each separate road unit this is a gauge wheel i know y'all guys out there in the midwest uh have, have some gumbo soil or some of y'all guys that uh that no till are gonna wonder why we run duels down here in the south running duels dual gauge wheels is pretty common it's a standard setup we have a lot of brick red clay as you can see and clay is typically accompanied with sand. There's usually sand in close proximity to clay. So maybe in the corner of a field or in a, a bottom somewhere around the edge, right? Maybe a little hole out there in the middle be real sandy. And if we have sand and you run singles, you don't run duels, this wheel will just push instead of roll. And this is what determines the depth of the seed. So if it's pushing, it's filling up a big mound and you'll be leaving seed on top of the ground with a big hump on either side of it. You don't want that. So to maintain traction through sandy areas, we run duels on most of the planters down south. We also run what they call cotton disc. We have cotton disc right here. I don't think those are common most most other areas in the, south, uh, in the country, but right in the south, we run cotton disc on the planters. And one thing you have to watch out for is if you have clods, which I don't have any big ones out here. We've run a, a new machine that we got a, a video coming up on. But if you have a big clod, it can get stuck between those cotton discs and drag out a hole instead of instead of passing through and running under the press wheel. So I always got to keep a close check on those cotton discs if you're not running a very fine teal soil. I hope y'all found this video informative. Maybe you found out something you didn't already know. Consider following along as I raise this crop all the way to harvest and we find out which one of these varieties yields the most and which one makes the most money. Those two things are not always uh, mutually exclusive. Sometimes a lower yield is more profitable. So we're going to find out. Hope y'all come along for the ride. I thank all y'all for watching. And I hope to see you next time.